With this blues guitar lesson for beginners video, we'll take that first step in being able to solo and improvise with the blues by showing you how to play the pentatonic minor scale box pattern. And along with box pattern diagrams and guitar tabs and three blues scale exercises, we're going to cover it all with a step-by-step -step approach. Now when it comes to soloing, the primary scale you'll hear in most blues and rock guitar solos is the pentatonic minor scale. And this will range from artists from B.B. King to Eric Clapton, Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, ACDC, Guns N' Roses, etc., etc. And pentatonic minor is the more official or academic name in the scale. Uh, but most guitarists will refer to the pentatonic minor as simply the blues scale. And in order to learn how to solo and improvise with blues and rock, the first step will be to become familiar with playing the pentatonic minor scale in ascending and descending order. Before getting started, if you are a beginner, we want to emphasize that you use a pick when learning how to solo. Um, if you don't use a pick, uh, you will develop a blister on your thumb pretty quickly. Uh, compared to using your thumb or your fingers when soloing, uh, a pick gives you more volume and it also allows you to apply a little bit more speed technique to soloing down the road. And pretty much when it comes to blues and rock, just about Every classic blues and rock guitar solo that you've heard, just about every one, uh, they are using a guitar pick. Now we're going to start by focusing on one note at a time to learn the scale, and with that we take our fretting hand. For most of us, that will be the left hand. And we're going to place the first finger on the sixth string, which is the bottom string, fifth fret. And let's hear all that sounds. Hopefully that syncs up with what you're doing. And we also want to sync up with the tab example on the screen. A quick review of reading guitar tab. Uh, the six lines represent the six strings. And they're numbered, so uh, if you look there, we're starting on the sixth string. And the number on that line uh, for the sixth string is the fifth fret. So the numbers on the lines represent the frets. And on my tabs, I include the finger numbers to fret with below the fret numbers. So below that five, you'll see the one. That's our one finger. So first finger on the sixth string, fifth fret. And we're going to pretty much our approach to start. We're going to pair up notes on uh, one string at a time. Uh, and that's how we're going to get through playing this pattern, which is going to cover all six strings. So. The first pair of notes will be five, and then same string we go to the eighth fret with the fourth pinky finger. Now if you're a beginner, you're going to feel that stretch. Um, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. So you can slightly lift that first finger off. After you play that first note on the fifth fret, you can slightly lift the finger so that pinky can be as close to the eighth fret as you can get it. And with that, uh, we're going to now move up the strings. And I say up because uh, even though gravity says this direction is down, uh, everything in guitar is based on sound. So when you're moving up strings, you're actually going higher up. So um, here we go. Let's start it from the beginning. Five, eight. And then that first finger is going to remain aligned and assigned along that fifth fret. We just go to the next string and we're going to play the 5th fret and then the 7th fret with the 3rd finger on that 5th string. So 5-7 will be the next string. Let's put it together from the beginning and play that 4 note sequence. 5 8 5 7 one more time. Five, eight, five, seven. Now, if we're able to do that, um, learning the next two strings will be easy because we're going to repeat that five, seven interval for each of the next two strings. So, another way to put it is we have three, five, sevens in a row. And um, so, here's how it'll sound on the next string five, seven, and then the third string five, seven. So it'll be 5-8, five, 5-7, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven. And let's put together that sequence now, uh, taking care of four strings. 
five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven. And then uh, you don't have to keep pressed down with that third finger, but you don't want to leave that position. Um, from that position, we now go to the next string, which will be the second string. And we're going to go five, eight. So we're going to repeat how we started the scale. Five, eight on the second string. Let's put that together now. See if we can play five, the first five strings. Here we go. Five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five. Seven, five, eight. Now we go to the final string, the one string. And here we're going to play a three note sequence. Again, starting with five. It'll be five, eight, back to five. And we let that note ring or sustain to end this pattern here. Let's do that again, that three note riff. Let's see if we can put it all together now from the beginning. And I'll be calling off the frets. We'll do a slow walkthrough. Five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight. Five, eight, five, and let that last note ring or sustain. A couple pointers. Um, of course, eventually you're going to build up speed, but your priority early on uh, should be playing the correct notes. So, uh, first bit of advice with playing the scale and practicing it is that slow is fast. That's a common term used a lot when it comes to learning music and. Slow is fast means if you focus on playing the correct notes with clarity, uh, you're going to get there quicker than playing too fast, making too many mistakes, and having to constantly stop and start over. So uh, first objective should be playing correct notes, and uh, eventually you'll sink in. Not only the muscle memory will sink in, but also recognizing uh, the correct pattern to play. And Secondly, uh, you focus on clarity. And with clarity, that uh, means you having the fingers as close to the frets as possible without fretting them. And again, if you're a beginner, you're going to be uh, extending those fingers um, a bit more than you're used to. Uh, but that's the whole point, is to get the fingers in shape. So you want to be as close to the frets as possible to get clarity. And you also need to use your fingertips. If you have longer nails, that's going to interfere uh, with your clarity. So um, with that, um, keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to continue going over the scale. Uh, but you need to prioritize playing correct notes, then focusing on clarity. And then with that, the last thing you focus on will be improving your speed. Now before we play the scale again, let's look at it from a box pattern perspective. If you look at the diagram here on the screen, it shows the pentatonic minor scale in a box pattern form. A box pattern is essentially an aerial view of the scale going across the six strings, with the sixth bottom string being on the far left and the first top string being on the far right. And the finger numbers to fret with are shown in the black circles. And all of the notes we played in the previous example will fit within this box pattern. Now, the box pattern doesn't tell you uh, the exact running order to play, but if you visualize that pattern, um, it kind of helps sink in a little bit. Because when guitarists are soloing, when you see them going all over the fretboard, it's not magic. They're following uh, patterns. And regardless of what style of music you're going to play, you're going to visualize box patterns when you're soloing along the fretboard. So, what the heck, let's do it right now. Let's play the same pattern from the previous clip. Uh, we'll visualize the pattern this time. 
Again, remember to end with that three note ending. Uh, here we go. One, two, ready, go. If you can do that, uh, once you get familiar with that, you may have to pause the video, but if you can keep up with that speed, what we'll do with the next clip is we're going to review uh, the ascending order for the pentatonic minor scale uh, a little bit faster, and we're going to do it three consecutive times. Next step is to play the pentatonic minor scale in descending order, and we're going to start with the same note we ended with before, which is that top string, first string, fifth fret, that note we let sustain. Well, we're going to start with that same first string, fifth fret note, and then to make it truly descending, uh, we play that note and then we immediately switch strings. We're going to go down to the two string and everything's reversed, so we're going to go 8-5 on the second string. So let's put it together from the beginning with the descending order, and then go down to the two string, 8-5. As I mentioned, everything's reversed, so we're going to go back to those uh, five sevens, but this time everything's reversed. It's going to be 7-5, down a string 7-5, down another string 7-5. So 7-5 third string, 7-5 fourth string, 7-5 fifth string, and then to end it, back to the pinky finger, 8-5, and that'll be the last note in the descending run, and we're going to let that last note ringer sustain as well. And now we're going to do it again, and we'll, again, we'll get acclimated to looking at the box pattern. Um, again, everything will fit within this box pattern, but let's do another run, uh, descending. One, two, ready, go. Next, we put it all together by combining the ascending and descending orders into one run. And as a first step, I'll kind of walk through it with you. I'll be calling off the frets. And so let's do that. Here we go from the beginning. Five, eight, then five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, Five, eight, five, eight, five, and let that last note ringer sustain. And then you play the same note again to begin the descending order. Five, then you immediately go down to the two string. Eight, five on that string. Down to seven, five, seven, five, the three seven fives in a row, seven, five, 
fourth finger down to the bottom string, eight, five, and we let that last note ring or sustain. And what you can do with the next clip, we're actually going to play this ascending and descending order riff three times in a row. Uh, so you can practice along with that and see if you can keep up with the next clip. One advantage to learning this pentatonic minor scale box pattern is that the intended bluesy mood of the scale can clearly be heard. Uh, associating moods with scales, it develops the ability to learn songs and melodies by ear. So in time, by simply recognizing the mood of a guitar solo as being either rock or blues based, a guitarist can associate that mood with the pentatonic minor scale and immediately begin to jam along or improvise with the track without having to rely on any sort of written notation. For beginners, the primary objective early on is to develop finger strength and flexibility, and we're doing both with this pentatonic minor box pattern. Uh, not only is it a great exercise for the fingers, uh, but the same pattern is actually going to be used in many of the classic blues and rock solos that you may learn sometime. And speaking of getting the fingers in shape, with the next clip, we're going to again uh, review going up and down the scale, but this time at a faster pace. So if you're able to keep up with the uh, previous exercise we did, uh, the next one will be, like I said, a little bit faster tempo. Once you have this lesson down, the next step is to move up to the next level or lesson with blues soloing basics. And with that next lesson, we'll show you how to play the blues scale in any key.